Let's get into the panel on this talk of perhaps a travel bubble with Singapore. Will it happen? Well, the catch is it'll only go ahead once a majority of citizens in both countries have been vaccinated. Well, I hope that means the borders more broadly are open and not just to Singapore. Let's bring in the panel, a Friday panel here from Sydney, host of Outsiders, Rowan Dean, and social commentator from Sydney too, Prue McSween. It sounds like good news, but as I said, you know, if we're all getting to the point of being vaccinated, I hope we can go further afield than uh, just just Singapore, Prue. Yes, one would hope so, Peter. I think uh, politically, though, Morrison would be worried about the concerns of the Australian population and what's going to be imported along with those people. So I'm sure he's proceeding very cautiously as we're, we're hearing. And also the Singaporean Prime Minister seems very cautious as well. Uh, you know, are, are people, again, is it enough that there's going to be a herd uh, target of vaccinations? Or are we going to be stipulating that people must be vac vaccinated? Um, and Will they go into quarantine or will they not? You know, I think that it's going to be very we much... We don't have... We don't... Sorry, Prue, I was just going to say, we don't have clarity on any of that. I mean, the PM was on Perth Radio yesterday. He said he hasn't got a number in mind in terms of a vaccination target. There isn't seemingly a plan about all the steps to get out and about and open the borders again. I mean, I haven't seen one of you. No, I haven't either. And I think the problem is for for Scott Morrison, is he wants to tread very carefully. He knows this could be political dynamite. Uh, so I don't know that we will, you know, maybe it was just searching for an announcement for the Singaporean visit and this was it, but it hasn't been fleshed out at all. And I think it could be a minefield for him politically. Yeah, I think, they, well, I, but I do think, yeah, I do think there is reticence from the Prime Minister. We could see all the elections where the borders were shut, uh, favoured the incumbents who were keeping them shut. But, of course, we need a plan. We need a plan. Yep. Let's go to Macquarie Street. A New South Wales Environment Minister, Matt Keane, has been accused of misleading Parliament for inaccurately claiming a series of environmental projects were, in fact, on track when they weren't. Internal government documents obtained by Mark Latham show projects including a $50 million pumped hydro investment are at risk of being underfunded and poorly implemented, contrary to what the Minister, Matt Keane, is telling Australians. I tell you what, Rowan, Matt Keane's green agenda, completely out of control. he got a colleague now, Andrew Constance, wanting to electrify everything that moves in New South Wales. None of this looks like it's on budget or on time, probably not even feasible. What's your reaction? Well, my reaction is what I hope the same reaction as everybody throughout New South Wales and Australia is. Thank God for Mark Latham. I mean, Mark Latham is such uh, a superb uh, politician and political figure now for Australia, particularly for New South Wales. But what he talks about goes much broader. Uh, he, do he has the intellect and the, the nous uh, to scrutinise what is actually going on behind the scenes. And people should be really angry about this. Peter, because we keep being told, on the one hand, uh, we're being scared, witless, you know, it's the end of the world, doomsday, Greta Thunberg, school kids are convinced we're all going to die in 12 years' time because of climate change. So they ramp up the fear relentlessly, Peter. And, and at the same time, they go, oh, it's OK, it's OK, because we've got all these incredible uh, renewable schemes which are going to do everything and solve all these problems. Now, I've said all along, and many others have said this, that basically the renewable scam are, are riding on the coattails of fear-mongering about climate change, mm. and they do it with these kind of pie-in-the-sky ideas. We're going to... Malcolm Turnbull, we're going to push water uphill and that's going to make electricity. We're going to have hydrogen cars, you know, uh, look at the Hindenburg, how well that worked out. We're going to do this, we're going to do that. All these scams and schemes. And thank goodness for Mark Latham, who sits down and he goes through the figures and he says, you're saying they're on track, Matt Keane. They're not on track. They're off track. They're not happening. You don't have the money to do all this stuff properly. Uh, I'm with Latham. It sounds like Matt Keane has misled Parliament, but he's, uh, whether he's done that or not, I don't know, but they have certainly misled every Australian person out there. And this is really getting out of control, Peter. Hey, we need more Mark Lathams in the Parliament, sure not do. fewer Mark Lathams. Like that's where we're at. Uh, this heartbreaking story out of Queensland, let's go to that now. A Melbourne couple who were separated from the newborn baby for over a week, despite both mum and dad being fully vaccinated against COVID. 
They've finally been re reunited with their son, but now in a fresh blow, the couple are told it will cost them $30,000 to airlift their son from Queensland home to Melbourne. Prue, I think this is just extraordinary. It's another sign of Anastasia Palaszczuk's lack of humanity. How can we solve this for the family? Well, I believe that a friend of the family is uh, doing a, a fundraising online for them. But, you know, there is no, there is no logic. There's no emotional um, barometer by Palaszczuk and a health minister. Uh, and certainly the mess in Melbourne, you know, they, they all have one con common denominator, that they're Labor. Uh, you know, they preach that they're for the worker for the for the people you know they drive these social initiatives but when the truth be told they haven't got an ounce of emotion or sentiment or compassion it's tragic for this family and i just hope that they can raise some funds but you know we've seen it time and time again with palaszczuk she has no heart she abrogates her responsibility to the health people uh, who again you know just are cut and dried and fearful and that's the problem, fearful and have no confidence in their system. And this is why people are finding themselves in this terrible dilemma. All right, Rowan, put your political analyst hat on. I don't understand why Victorian Labor is still ahead in the polls. I think the last polls I saw, they dropped a bit, but they're still in front of, of the Victorian Liberal opposition. You go to Queensland, Anastasia Palaszczuk wins very handsomely back in October. She locked Queenslanders out. She let the millionaire yachties in and the movie stars in. as She's punished this, this young family. Cancer patients couldn't get home. A young girl, remember, from Canberra couldn't go and see her father who was dying in Brisbane. How on earth do they get away with it and maintain community support? Because I think a lot of people you talk to are not with the governments when they have this lack of humanity. Well, Peter, you've highlighted many of the, uh, you know, business people, restaurateurs and so on, others who have uh, who've, who've basically possibly lost their business, lost their careers, livelihoods, etc., because of the madness, the ineptitude of the Andrews government. Now, I can only imagine that uh, because in Victoria you have the age uh, very powerfully on, on Dan Andrews' side, you have the ABC, uh, I'm not sure that... Uh, you know, there's much uh, that the people of Victoria actually hear about what's happening in the rest of the world is the only uh, is the only conclusion I can draw. It does seem to have kind of shades of East Germany where they're in their own little bubble and they think that uh, there's Dan Andrews or whoever the other bloke is, uh, Molino, keeping them safe. Um, once, the, once they realise uh, what a farce uh, the Andrews government has been over the last year, surely the scales must fall from their eyes. Uh, I, I cannot believe that the Victorian people are that silly that they would vote in the Andrews government, any Labor government ever again for, for a generation after the way they have performed. But are they hearing the truth? How, how effective is the Andrews propaganda? It seems to be working, Peter. But if it were me, I cannot understand how they could have a, even a hope at the next election. Prue, reports today Julie Bishop could be hauled in front of a parliamentary committee to answer a whole lot of questions about her lobbying for the collapsed finance firm Greensill Capital. Uh, we know that's certainly been an issue for David Cameron in Britain. It could be that she's asked to appear. She doesn't have to be. She's a private citizen. But in the past, when former MPs have been asked to front, they front. Do you think she uh, has questions to answer? Definitely she does, and uh, she's been dodging it. Maybe they should say that it's going to be a fashion catwalk or something and she'll turn up. You know, she's <laughs> so she's very keen to, to get herself uh, associated with the fashionistas, but when it comes to confess or not, let's not say confessing, she may not have anything to confess, but to relate what she knows, when and where, um, it's a, a serious issue and it's really not doing her any favours, her image any favours. If she does not front up, then her credibility, from my perspective, is very questionable. So I think she needs to front up, definitely. Yeah, needs to testify, absolutely. Just before we go, Rowan, Four Corners, they're already starting to promo an episode highlighting so-called so -called links between uh, Scott Morrison and a supporter of the QAnon's conspiracy theories just days after the managing director of the ABC said it was not ready for broadcast. Now, 
Four Corners executive producer Sally Neighbour said this afternoon out via Twitter that, uh, that it will go to air on Monday night and she released a 30-second clip of the investigation. This is extraordinary. This is, this is activism. This is not a national broadcaster. Rowan? Yeah, and uh, the behaviour of the ABC has just uh, been getting worse and worse. Uh, why the coalition put up with it? Why Josh Frydenberg in the next budget isn't uh, defunding them? John Stone has a great piece in The Spectator this week saying start by a 50% defunding of the ABC immediately. They are a political organisation that acts against... Uh, not only the coalition, but the individuals within the coalition, the way they treated Alan Tudge, uh, the way that prior to that, uh, obviously, Cardinal Pell, uh, the way they're attacking Morrison's family. Now, this QAnon stuff, I mean, I had some Labour character telling me the other day, oh, everybody is, is, is on QAnon. I have no idea what QAnon or whatever it is is. <laughs> Perhaps this uh, show will enlighten us. But to attack the Prime Minister as some kind of mad right-wing conspiracy, I'm sorry, I hate to tell you, ABC, uh, if there's one criticism of Scott Morrison, he's too far to the left, not too far to the right. I'm sorry, I'll leave it at mm. that. Have a great weekend, you too. Rowan Dean, Premix Wayne, thank you as always. <laughs> Thanks, Peter, you too. Thanks, see you, Peter.